Hi there. Today we're going to be having a look at the 2019 September midterm test. This is a shortened test format that includes very short questions on Microsoft Word, Excel, Access, and a tiny little bit of web page work. So let's have a look at what you're given. On the web page, you'll find that you are given the data file, which you must download and extract. Don't forget to extract this under your own folder. You're also given the test paper, which looks a little bit like that. You're going to have these data files, cleaning, healthy body, awards, publication, cleaning, data, and gem, which you'll use to answer all the questions. Now, the question paper is in both English and Afrikaans. We'll just be looking at the English half of this. Okay, so we're going to begin with the Word section. I've downloaded the files and they are now sitting in this little folder. So we're going to begin with question number one. If yours opens with a little window saying enable editing, then make sure you do that. You can't type anything until you do. Otherwise, you go to the view menu up in the top and you choose edit document. Right, here is what we are given. And the first question was, change the left margin of the document to one centimeter. So we're going to go along to layout, where you will find margins on the left hand side. We can choose a custom margin and I can change just the left one to one centimeter. We're then going to have to study this little example they've given where everything is divided into three columns. You'll notice that we have a table of contents and lines between the columns. So fully justify the text of the document. We can select everything and we are going to go back home and fully justify. Place the title healthy body, healthy mind, in a text box at the beginning of the document as shown above. The text box has to have a three point blue border. The text is centered in the text box. So we can just move back to the beginning to reduce the size of this slightly so everything fits on the screen. It's usually a good idea when you're working on these exercises to make sure that you show the hidden characters. This allows you to see where the various paragraphs breaks are as well as any extra tabs. And when you are copying information, you can exclude the paragraph marks from what you're copying. I've cut that text that I'm going to have to insert. I'm now going to insert a text box, a simple text box. I actually want this to appear before the, before the header. And we can change the way the text wraps around this. We can say I'm going to wrap uh, top and bottom. That is so that the text the document appears below this. We make our text box a little bit wider. Center the text in the text box. And we need to format the text box. So right click on the border of the text box, format shape. And you'll see we now have on the right hand side of the screen, I can choose, I want a solid line, I want it to be three points wide. What else do we have to do? It had to be a three point blue border. Didn't say whether it was going to be a double line or a single line, but we can choose a nice solid blue. And by default, there we are with a single line, three point blue border. Right, let's look at what's next. Place the text from the heading school health program to the end of the document in columns. So we want three columns going to the end of the document. Shift, control, end. We'll select the entire document from your starting point. So I have that. Otherwise, another way of selecting the entire document, control A selects everything and Holding down the control key, I can click on the title to unselect it. This gives us 
everything selected to the end of the document. I want to change the layout to three columns. I'm going to do this under the more column settings. We've got three columns there. I can say I want a line between. If I had to change the column widths, this would be where I would do it as well. Say not equal widths and choose the column spacing. But we aren't requested to do that in this instance. Okay, now everything is in three different columns. And we have the very important line between. Questions? One centimeter spacing between the columns. I forgot about that bit. So, more columns. This also is where we can choose the spacing between the columns. And I can say I want a one, not 11, one centimeter space. Because we are working with equal column widths, you'll notice that it has immediately changed the setting for the next column as well. Right. Create a table of contents to appear in the first two columns. Page numbers are right aligned with no tab leader and do not show them as hyperlinks. Most of your questions are going to ask you to use things that appear in the submenus in Word. So under references, you'll find table of contents and towards the bottom of that list, you'll find custom table of contents. We're going to be using a custom table of contents, much like you'll probably use custom bulleted items, custom list boxes, custom table format. This is to test whether you can actually use the detailed stuff from the submenus. All right, in this box, there's a little preview. And then below that, you'll see tab leader. We want no tab leader. Page numbers are already right aligned. If they were not right aligned, they would appear next to the headings. They didn't say which template we were supposed to use, but you may be asked to choose that in the exam. Show levels, we want only two levels. And you'll see on the right hand side, they're showing us hyperlinks. Do not use hyperlinks. No tab leaders. Okay, and there's our table of contents. Back to the question. Ensure that the first paragraph, starting with the heading School Health Program, starts at the top of the third column. Just as you can have a page break, which moves text onto the next page, you can also have a column break, which moves text to the top of the new column. So we're going back to layout. You'll find at the top of the menu, breaks, and just under that, a column break. And there we have it, which should look pretty similar to the example that was given us. Right, last section from that page. Format the C of congratulations in the first paragraph to be a dropped capital letter five lines deep. So a nice big one. So here is the C of congratulations. We're going to insert and this little icon over here is add drop cap. Again, we're going down to the custom options because I want to tell it it's a dropped cap and it must be five lines deep. We weren't told any specific distance from the text, just that it's five lines deep. So that's where we are. Big C. Right, and then we're done with the word bit. Don't forget to save. Don't forget to save. And unfortunately, we won't have anything to mark. Next question is the Excel. We're going to be working in Q2 awards. So let's open Q2 awards. Here we go. This is the sheet we we're given to start with. Let's see what we have to do. Key in your name and initials in cell A1. And then merge cells A1 to D1 and place a border around the merge cells. So we're going to A1. Please type your own name and not your name. We merge. Did we have to center? It just said merge the cells, so it doesn't matter whether you center or not. And we need a border around those cells. We can do a thick outside border. 
you aren't told to do any extra formatting of the border but if you did then in the borders menu more borders here you can choose the color for the borders and how you want particular lines to appear whether you want different lines different colors for each portion of the border right use a function to change the text in cell c2 to capital letters now excel isn't quite like word here if you have a look at word you'll find there is a menu option which allows you to choose the case of text and you can choose a word like the rest of congratulations and choose to make that uppercase we don't have that option we don't have that option in excel when i have a look at excel that menu option is not visible and not present the only way i can do that is to use an actual function normally this would ask you to do it in a separate cell i would say i want to change the text in C2 to capital letters and show this in E2, for example. Then I would say equals upper C2, and there it is. This wasn't the way that question was phrased. So I'm going to have to do the same thing here. They specify you have to use a formula, so I can't retype this as capital letters. We've got to use the formula equals upper and I'm going to literally change that text so I have to tell Excel I'm working with literally the text hours. I do that by putting that text in inverted commas and there we are. It does mean that if I ever want to change it back all I have to do is delete my function and the original text is still there. There we go. Next question. They do have the note. You can use another cell to get the correct result in cell F2 if necessary. That makes me think that this question actually had a typo in it. I'm guessing the intent was to have the original text display in cell F2. Apply the changes to row 2. Center the column headings vertically. So we're going to select the column headings. And under alignment, you will find vertical. We are going to center them. You probably didn't see much of a change, but if I were to make that column wider, now you would see that they are centered vertically. Next, change the background color of the cells to any color. So the cells are already selected, so we can choose any full color that tickles your fancy. Let's do something slightly purple today. Insert a function in D3 to combine the surname in column B with a comma and the first letter in column A. Now there are several functions you can use. In the older versions of Excel you have a concatenate function to join text together. This is no longer present in the latest version of Excel um, that comes with Office 2019 and Office 365. This has been replaced with a concat function. The one that hasn't changed across the two versions is to use the ampersand character and to join text together. So I'm going to use that one for this function. So we start with the surname in B3 over here, ampersand, and we're going to want a comma. We want the comma to display literally, so I have to put it in inverted commas again. We have the ampersand, and then I want the leftmost letter from the name. So that would be left, and we're taking it from A3. And then the number of characters, I only want one character, so there we are. Now, have a look at this little formula. You will notice that mine says left A3, comma 1. If your computer is set to use the 
South African standard number representation, then your formula will not read left A3, comma 1. You will have to use left A3, semicolon 1, like this. Otherwise, your Excel will in, try and interpret that comma as a decimal point. It's one of the places where working in a South African system does kind of mess us around a little bit. Some of the software that you have on your computers may require South African specific settings for your, for your number formats, and then you're going to have to adjust your formulas in Excel accordingly. So if you type A3, comma 1 and it gives you an error, use a semicolon instead. And if you've typed A3, semicolon 1 and you get an error, maybe use a comma instead. Moving on down. We're done with the Excel bit. So again, make sure you save. You close Excel. And then we're going to open Q3 publication. This is the database. We're opening Microsoft Access. All right. If you have a look at the what you're given, make sure you enable the content. We can make this a trusted document. You're given one table, table properties. Table properties has no data at the moment. And we just check to see what's showing. It says we are showing all access objects. Sometimes you may find the tables supplied to you are set to show just tables, and then you don't see the queries or reports or forms that actually were supplied with the database. Make sure then you show all access objects just so that you can see everything that is actually provided for you. Right, let's have a look at our questions. Make the following changes to the table properties table. Set a primary key on a suitable field. Let's start with that one. So we're going to go to design view for this table. You can right click on the table and choose design view, or you can use design view from the top left hand menu. Here we are. And let's look at what will make a suitable primary key. Remember the requirement for a primary key is it must be a unique value. We can't have something that's going to potentially have duplicate values. Amazing as it may seem, people do sometimes have the same name. You can even share an email address with someone. You could share a cell phone number. So while no two cell phone numbers will be the same, two people may have the same cell phone number. But donor ID, that one should be unique. Two people in the same family will still have different donor IDs. So this would be the most appropriate key. If, of course, I didn't have donor ID, then I would have to look at what would be the next most unique value. And cell phone number would probably be the next most likely to be a unique value. Not everyone will have an email address, for example. Right. Next question. Set the field size of the name field to 20. So we go to name. You'll see field size in the options down the bottom. You change that to 20. As soon as you do that, if there is data in your table and you then save the table, it's going to give you a warning that you are going to potentially delete data when you save the table. And this is because the field size could potentially have had a value that was 255 characters long and you are now reducing it to only have 20 characters. This was your instruction. You were told make the field size 20. So you do whatever they are telling you to do anyway. Save the thing. Right, next question. Delete the list field from the table. If you have a look at the table, you'll find there is a list field. You can right click next to that one and delete the rows. Save your table, yes, and there we are. Let's go back to the design view. The school will give each donor an identity code for the database. Ensure that this code can be entered into the donor ID field. And it's only allowed to have the following format. Three capital letters, followed by either two or three digits. 
your exam paper will have an input mask sheet to assist you if you don't have if you can't remember these but if you have a look at the sheet you'll find that the capital letter L is a required letter and a zero is a required digit and a nine represents an optional digit our input mask which we're going to use for this exercise then has got to have three required letters followed by two required digits and one optional digit last they also say three capital letters we have to force these letters to be capital in our input mask sheet you'll find that symbol the greater than symbol causes all letters to be converted to uppercase so before the characters I insert the symbol for uppercase and that's all they ask us to do in that so we can save this yes we want to save the design changes and we can close access and we move on question four, the HTML question so we're going to open our web page the incomplete Q4 cleaning web page and I'm going to be using notepad plus plus again because it has a very nice set of syntax highlighting features which make it easier to see what's going on in the web page not least of which is the indication of what an opening and closing tag is all right let's look at what we're asked to do format the text healthy body healthy mind so that it appears centered and is formatted in a heading one style in a red font color similar to as shown in the picture on the screen if we have a look at the web page you'll see they've already given us a h1 a line equals center they've given you a font tag red and a closing tag h1 except in that it's missing the last little closing format and then in the title of the page healthy body healthy mind so we can take that copy it and paste it here save this and to see what you've done you'll need to open this in a web page similar to here this is the original text reload that and we now have healthy body healthy mind at the top of the page in a heading one style and in red add a horizontal line with a 90% width below the heading we're going to add this ruled line so just for the note this text that they've shown here they've indicated that this should be inside the head that is incorrect the header of the document is above the title so even though they have not required this I'm going to correct that the heading which they've indicated over here is not part of the head of the document the head specifies the meta information the stuff to handle search engine optimizations and also the title of the document this heading is technically part of the body of the document so we're going to move that down into the body now below the body now I can put an HR for horizontal rule and I can say it's width equals 90% and regardless of the size of the web page we save this and we reload there it is if I make my web page smaller you'll notice that that stays at 90% of the width of the screen moving on change the image that has been inserted below the bulleted list and we have to change it so that the height is 10 and the width 200 that is this image that you can see on the screen we will be searching for that particular tag there it is and we're going to add the options height height should be a hundred so equals 100 and width equals 2 
with nothing else specified, that will be interpreted as pixels. Right. Reload. And there is our much smaller picture. I also want us to add a border. Set the border to 5. So you're going to also add a border tag. Border equals 5. Just do spell border correctly. Save. Reload. And now there's a black border that shows around the picture. Display the text, Amanda Morin, cat teacher in bold and italics. So that is over here. We're going to add B for bold, I for italic. And remember when you are closing these tags, I for italic, B for bold, and in reverse order that you added them. In other words, on the outside, we have the bold, on the inside, we have the italic. I could have put the italic on the outside, but then the opening tag has to be on the outside and the closing tag. You, these are nested, one inside the other. Right, save, check, reload, and here is Amanda Morin. Okay, last section. Open the Q5 data spreadsheet. So we're going to open Q5 data. Here we are. Set the print area to the range G1 to N50. So select from G1 to N50. You may find it easier to work in reverse sometimes. If, it's, if your Excel screen has a tendency to scroll faster than you can control, go down to the bottom cell, choose where it is, and you can select towards the top much easier than it is to scroll down. You can't go higher than G1. Uh, we want to set print area, so under page layout, you'll find print area, set print area. And if I were to try and print, file, print, it would now show you starting at what was the data from column G1, coin ID. And if you look at G1, that is coin ID. All right. Save that and then close. We're then going to work in Q5 gem, which is the Word document. Enable editing once again, or go to View, Edit Document. And let's have a look at what we have to do. Accept all the track changes in the document and stop track changes. So we have to turn track changes off. This is under the review section. You will find track changes. The changes are indicated by, in this instance, little vertical lines like this, indicating where a change was made in this particular document. So we want to accept all changes. And then we want to make sure that track changes is turned off. When it's grayed like this, track changes is on and any changes you make will be indicated. Notice immediately the little red line on the left. Turn off and now if I make any changes, there's no indication that the changes were, were made. Next question. Convert the end note to a footnote. Note the position of the footnote will not change. Among other things, you only have one page in this document. So an end note and a footnote would appear in the same place. If you right click on the end note, you will find you have the options go to the end note, which is where it is in the document, and convert to footnote. There we are and it is now at the bottom of the page. Right click on that, and if I needed to convert it to an end note, that's where I would find this. Go to footnote, takes us to the position in the document. 
change the paragraph spacing of the text in the paragraph with the bo paragraph border towards the end of the page to three points after. This is a space of three points after the paragraph. So we're looking for the paragraph with the border. I don't see a paragraph with a border, but we do have this one towards the end of the document. So paragraph and we can change that to after to three points. Okay. They're asking a specific value in this case because what they want to avoid, and this is the test, if you just use the up and down arrows, it goes up in sixes. We're going to three. You have to type a specific value. And again, save. Don't rely on when you close that it's going to ask you to save. It's too easy to make the mistake of not saving. Make sure you save your work explicitly before you close. And that's it. I hope you didn't find that too difficult. I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.